every time a presidential candidate, every time a gubernatorial candidate, every time a congressional candidate needs some money, you land down there on one of those private landings, they have lunch for you, you walk out of there $10,000 richer, $150,000 richer, and they buy another day. And that's what they're doing. They're just playing for time. The, the, you know, these are not shy people. These, these, these are these, <laughs> these people. Hey, you couldn't. Uh, never mind. But there was now public suspicion that something had gone terribly wrong amid the abundance, and an environmental time bomb was about to explode at the Kesterson Game Refuge. The story from NBC's Don Oliver. Employees of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service have been doing this for months, trying to frighten off birds and waterfowl from the toxic ponds of the Kesterson Wildlife Refuge. Officials it's uh, it's kind of difficult for, a, for an individual who's been spending a lifetime trying to create habitat to uh, be asked to try to move the the wildlife away from this habitat that you've created. These traditions of the birds are very, very difficult to break. In fact, they're almost impossible, especially when once they've begun to nest. It was a, it was a war zone out here. The valley's web of life had been thrown into chaos. Many eggs are still found to contain deformed chicks. The fish and wildlife people refer to these mosquito fish as little selenium tablets. The Bureau of Reclamation... The poisons from intensive farming and irrigation were deforming whatever tiny little museum pieces of nature were left. Runoff from Westland's farms contained selenium. For years, drainage had concentrated the selenium in the Kesterson ponds, while the Bureau of Reclamation waited for a permit to dump it into the San Francisco Bay and Delta. We went ahead with the Westland's project before we solved the drainage problem. We thought we knew how to solve the drainage problem. We thought the Kesterson Reservoir could be flushed on out into the Delta. We didn't have it to, uh, solidified. So I made a terrible mistake by going ahead with Westland at the time we did. David Burrington reports tonight that the problem begins on the farms and it winds up in the refuge. Many young birds have been killed and deformed by high concentrations of selenium, a trace element found in the region's soil. Last month, it was really an eye-opener when we started to take a look at some of the embryos, the very distorted features, bills that were uh, twisted, uh, missing eyeballs, bulges on the brain, deformed feet. Um, they remind me of the, of the thalidomide babies that uh, were over in, uh, in Europe. And these mud hens were, were up at this Kesterson place and they were uh, getting too much selenium and too much selenium is widely known does cause, cause birth defects and you know anything so they're getting deformed mud hens and things which was unfortunate but it wasn't the end of the world. When it exploded in our face with bird deformities what gave all of our attackers the proof they need that agriculture really is bad it does destroy the environment because we had some deformed birds out there. Kesterson was the proof and we were the bad guys and it was really a turning point and we would sit and struggle with a photograph of a bird headline on every newspaper and TV news every night, you know, about this crisis at the end of irrigated agriculture and a million acres are going to go out of production. We could not make a connection between how do we solve this problem and how do we deal with this public crisis over here that was created. But for those mud hens and but for those ducks at Kesterson Reservoir, uh, that plan eventually would have continued to creep on. Uh, but those, uh, those mud hens, uh, 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 they, they, they really turned uh, the political history of, uh, of the Central Valley Project. It was all adding up. Public anger at the Kesterson fiasco, congressional investigations into water subsidies, farm labor, and salmon. And now, the last straw, six years of drought. Dust storms raked the valley, and trucks bound for market slammed into the biggest wreck in American history on Interstate 5 in the Westlands. And the drought contributed to the wrecks Growers, short on water, let their fields go barren, and the dust piled up, waiting for strong winds to blow across the highway. And the drought kind of moves us ahead about 20 years in time, and all of a sudden, there's not enough water to go around. We have major shortages. Water was a lot like energy, that it was price responsive. 
And what we, we really had to do was attack the subsidy. And we became a nice target. There was a subsidy issue fashioned in there. There was uh, all kinds of sexy political things, uh, ways to beat us up. Big, slow-moving target. The areas of the country which have huge population growth on limited water resources are going to have to change the structure of their water usage. They're going to have to become more conservation-oriented. George Bush, on the road, on a roll, he told the Valley Farmers... The political the winds were about Democrats to shift, about away from agriculture toward the environment. George Bush had won the Valley in 1988. I don't believe we need the federal government getting into the water rights business. In 92, Bush was losing to Bill Clinton. Just before the election, he signed a popular reform law in hopes of gaining electoral votes. It raised the price of water, and for the first time in 50 years, returned water back into the salmon streams. You were going to have to now pay for that water. And if you had to now pay for that water, you'd have to take into consideration other concerns in terms of how you use that water, how efficient you are, the kinds of crops that you have to grow. When the law was changed, when the project was redirected, it was a, a huge train wreck. And we're, we're, because we've been chugging along, doing great, 50 years of reliability, the project working good, all this very stable, you know, farmers were not worried about water. Water was not an issue in California until the drought because it was reliable. And now we've got new contracts and our water costs have gone from 350, which is a great deal for 40 years, to 35 to $45 an acre foot overnight huge swings in, in costs. Well, water has gotten more expensive, but really with a shortage of water and all, we're paying more now than we ever have. So as much as we're paying, we need to make sure we don't use any more than absolutely necessary. I don't think we ever really wasted water out here because it was always expensive, but, but we're, uh, I think this has got to be one of the, the most efficient uses of water there is. But it belongs to us, don't it? The big canal, the taxpayers? Did I say something wrong? In the years since the reform law, there has been a fragile peace. But the Great Central Valley will never be the same. Nearly all the corporate farms have gone, along with some smaller farms. Native birds and Chinook salmon have begun a very slow comeback. The large growers who remain are among the most productive and water efficient in the country, producing more with less water. No one will ever know whether thousands of small farmers could have done the same. with us tomorrow night for Last Oasis, the final episode of Cadillac Desert.